Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add an extra layer of difficulty to your zombie games by making them explode when they touch the players. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm just going to get in the zombie's range. And there we go. So as soon as the zombie touches me, I'm going to explode. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is pick out your zombie or NPC model that you want to use. If you're looking in the toolbox, anything with this symbol right here is generally safe to use. Once you select your zombie or NPC, we're going to be adding a script to it. So go ahead and locate it in the workspace and then add a script. Once you do that, I just renamed the script to explode. The first thing we're going to do on the script is create a variable for the zombie model. So we're going to say local zombie. And that's going to be equal to script dot parent. And even if you're not using a zombie, it's okay to keep the variable name the same. The next thing we're going to do is say local exploded. And we're going to set that equal to false. The next thing we're going to do is create a for loop that's going to go through all the parts inside the zombie here. We're going to be attaching a touch event to those parts so that when it touches a player, we can have the zombie explode. Let's go ahead and start by saying for. We're going to say underscore comma part in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to start with our zombie model. We're going to say colon get children. So that's going to get all the objects inside the model. What we're going to do with those parts is we're first going to check to make sure it's a base part. So one of these items over here. To do that, we're going to say if part colon is a. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put base part. So if it's a base part, then what we're going to do is we're going to attach that touch event to it. So we'll say part dot touched colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. This function is going to take in the other part that touches the zombie. What we're going to do inside this function is see if that other part belongs to a player. So we'll say local player is equal to game dot players. We're going to say colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part dot parent dot name. Next, we're going to say if player. So if we're able to find a player and the zombie has not exploded yet. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set exploded equal to true. And then after we do that, we're going to create our explosion. We'll say local explosion. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. We're creating a new explosion. Next, we're going to set the parent of the explosion to the workspace. So we're going to say explosion dot parent is going to be equal to game dot workspace. Next, we're going to be setting the blast radius. So this is going to be how far the explosion will affect other parts. So we'll say explosion dot blast radius. And we're going to set that equal to five. So this explosion is going to affect parts within a five stud radius. And finally, we're going to set the position of the explosion by saying explosion dot position. And that's going to be equal to part. So that's the part of the zombie that touches the other player dot position. All right, and that's all we need. So a pretty short little script. And let's just go ahead and double check to make sure it's working. All right, so the zombie is after me now. So I'm going to go ahead and let the zombie touch me. And as soon as the zombie touches me, I explode. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. 